Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the brand new Duskmorn meta game. Today we're taking a look at a red-green storm combo deck that pairs Storm Splitter with a new Enduring Vitality. This 3-mana three 3-3 three, three enchantment creature has Vigilance and says creatures we control can tap to add 1 mana of any color, so similar to a Cryptolith right. And then this is also one of those Enduring Glimmers, so when it dies, if it was a creature, we get to return it into play as an enchantment, so it's no longer a creature, but it will still have that ability, letting our creatures tap to add one mana of any color. And then the curve is pretty simple. Turn 3, play Enduring Vitality. Turn 4, play Storm Splitter. A 1-4 with haste, saying whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a token that's a copy of Storm Splitter, and we have to exile that token at the beginning of the next end step. Now, this growth is going to be exponential, because every token we generate from Storm Splitter will also have that ability to make more tokens, so it doesn't take too many spells in a row to actually present a lethal army of Storm Splitters to immediately attack the opponent to death. And then the beauty here is that we no longer have mana as a limiting constraint, since we have all these one force with haste that can now tap for mana thanks to the Enduring Vitality. So if we go Vitality into Storm Splitter, we'll have two mana we can spend on one of our many cantrips, cast it, get one copy of Storm Splitter, hopefully cast another cheap cantrip, and then now we're starting to generate extra mana, so as long as we can keep casting more and more spells that kind of replace themselves or draw into more spells, we can just win the game on the spot. So this deck is very much capable of winning on turn 4, which we'll hopefully get to showcase. And then the rest of the deck is mostly just cantrips and ways to find Enduring Vitality and Storm Splitter. The important one here is Analyze the Pollen, as we can cast it early just to find a basic land, and then later we can cast it with Collect Evidence 8 by exiling total mana values 8 or more in our graveyard, and then now we can search any land or creature in our library and put it in hand. So now we can also find our Vitality and Storm Splitter with it, and it's still a 1 mana cantrip basically that can uh, trigger Storm Splitter if we're in the middle of comboing off. Then Might of the Meek can replace itself as long as we have a creature to target. And then a Cease and Assist is also a nice one here, as we're often casting the Cease half for two mana, exiling up to two target cards from a single graveyard, and then we can gain two and draw a card. So it does replace itself, gain us a bit of life, and can also give us some incidental graveyard hate. But more importantly, it's also an eight mana card for collect evidence purposes, since we combine both halves of the card when it's in our graveyard. So that's enough to let us analyze Pollen with collect evidence eight to find whatever creature we need. And then we also have another creature we can potentially find with Analyze the Pollen, which is Questing Druid, which also counts as an instant for Storm Splitter if we're in the middle of comboing off, so that's why this card is so important. Also gives us an alternate win condition in case the combo doesn't get there. So first we will Seek the Beast, exiling the top two cards of our library, and then until our next end step we may play those cards. So it can be a nice two for one as long as we have the mana to play both of those cards. can also play lands from exile potentially. So sometimes we'll play this during the opponent turn, that way we get to untap and still be able to play those cards from exile with potentially more mana available, and then the creature half can also grow whenever we cast a red spell. And then a cash grab, a two mana instant that mills four cards, and then we can put a permanent from among them into our hand. So the only cantrip we'll find is another questing druid potentially, but it can find both a lands as well as our two combo creatures. And then Highway Robbery is a card we can plot for two mana if we're not sure what to discard initially, and can be a free way to trigger a Storm Splitter if we're ready to combo off. And then it's still a way to maybe discard a card we don't need to draw to, or maybe sacrifice a land if we're about to win on that very same turn anyway. And then rounding out the deck, we have some spot removal. Torture Tower especially important against all the red aggro decks, as this can also exile an opposing creature. And then we can also maybe enable Bargain by sacrificing our own Enduring Vitality, which is sometimes a play that can come up if the opponent's about to exile our own Enduring Vitality, for instance. And then Volcanic Spide gives us 3 damage at instant speed, and it's also a pseudo cantrip, as we can get rid of a card in hand to replace it. So we can also get rid of dead cards in certain matchups to dig for the missing combo pieces. There will be moments where you would prefer having access to a Scorching Dragonfire, which can also exile opposing creatures, again relevant against the red decks, as well as in the mirror match, as you can exile an opposing Enduring Vitality, but in the more mid-rangey matchups that tend to get pretty grindy, I've uh, liked having access to that additional cantrip. And then the mana base has a relatively low land count, since we want to make sure we have a high density of uh, spells to trigger Storm Splitter, so don't want to flood out too badly. And then at the early turns, playing a tapped district to surveil is totally fine, 
fine since we're not really doing much else and then plenty of additional mana fixing with lots of red green dual lands including the new thornspire verge which also has plenty of basic types to enable it between a two of each basic which we can also find with analyzed apollon and then district also has both types to enable the verge so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does Okay, we're on the play. We have both Enduring Vitality and Storm Splitter. So this hand's ideal. Can Surveil, turn to maybe Analyze the Pollen for land. I'll keep another Surveil land, that's fine. No Ley Line from the opponent, so at least we're not gonna get killed on turn two, which is always fun. So first we probably want to Analyze, get a land. And Forest is fine. And then Surveil. And yeah, another Cantrip will do. Should also be able to cast it with the uh, Collect Evidence mode, since we'll have Cease and Assist in the Graveyard at some point. Opponent Red-White. So as long as they cannot exile the Enduring Vitality, we're happy. Alright, let's play it and see what happens. Now if they do destroy it, I'm gonna have one less mana to work with. So then I may want to wait an extra turn before I try and combo off. They could also have removal into a get lost for the enchantment half. But nope, put on just untaps. Now three mana for an Orbrask's Forge, so the classic red-white tokens deck. And uh, yeah, we might already be able to win here. If we get fortunate enough with our top decks. Play Storm Splitter. Can immediately tap for mana, and uh, I guess we can analyze, get a land. Now cast Might of the Meek. Get two copies. So we can cease and assist. Submit zero, draw a card. And then Analyze wants to get our uh, adventure creature. So with Collect Evidence. Since that's another way to trigger Storm Splitter. Yeah, standard has changed drastically with this one release. So it can still cash grab. And best case scenario, find another questing druid. But we might already have enough here. So nothing too exciting. All right, let's turn the team sideways. And I'm counting over 20 damage. Quite a bit more. Yeah, it's easy to lose track of how many copies you already have. And that'll do it. So on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got triple Enduring Vitality. A little bit much, but we also have Storm Splitter. And then Spite can get rid of one Enduring Vitality. So I think we still keep overall. Look for lands and cantrips. Cannot say no to a commercial district. Opponent with turn one swamp, so... Could still keep up Volcanic Spite. If we're afraid of a Deep Cavern Bat, Bat would just take the Volcanic Spite and then deny us the opportunity to get rid of an Enduring Vitality. But if I go District now, I'll be able to play Vitality on Curve. Although we're unlikely to win on turn four with this hand. So I think I give myself the opportunity to respond to a Deep Cavern Bat. And there it is. So, Volcanic Spite. Bottom of Vitality. And I could still play one on Curve after all. Now a Storm Splitter dies to cut down, so it's not too difficult for the opponent to blow up our combo. Virtue is fine, still get the enchantments. So yeah, I don't want to play Storm Splitter until we're ready to completely combo off. Now I did draw a second, but still probably no reason to waste it here when we can play another Vitality and Surveil. 
And then we just want cantrips. A long goodbye takes it out. That's fine. And a Bronco that can start providing card advantage. Alright, cease and desist. So I can go Storm Splitter and then immediately cease, make a copy. Although that's unlikely to go the distance, I want to say. So maybe for now it is just Storm Splitter pass a turn. And then next turn we can uh, hopefully keep going with more mana available. Although we can expect another removal spell. And yeah, there's a cut down. So could cease in response. I guess we'll wait. And now Yawgmoth, yeah, that also draws some more cards with the Bronco. They can saddle. This might be our final window to get something going. By removing the Enduring Vitality, they did deny a little bit of mana. Cash grab the draw. So, do we think we'll get to untap with Storm Splitter if we play it? Two unknowns, opponent gets to draw at least two or three more cards. So, this might be my last chance. And then cash grab, finding a land would still be fine. Although I have to give up on questing druids. But yeah, I need the land in order to cast Cease in the first place. And then we need to get lucky. Volcanic Spite's a good one. Even though we're empty-handed. Still deals with Gix. And then get in for four. Alright, so... opponent can still answer Storm Splitter and leave a stop decking. But now at least they're not drawing quite as many cards per turn. Yeah, had we cast Cease first and then Cash Grab, I might have been able to draw into a land and then adventure the questing druid, which would have been the ideal scenario. So not sure how those uh, odds work out exactly. We get to untap, find cash grab. Okay, let's give it a shot. Best case scenario, draw a questing druid. So it's going to be a land. I'll keep it in hand for a potential Volcanic Spite. Fountain Port makes a fish. Okay, so the game goes on. Seven mana means they can now cast their Virtue. Wasn't paying too much attention when casting Seas, but yeah, we did get rid of the bats, so they wouldn't be able to reanimate that at least. It looks like they may have found another answer to the Storm Splitter. Bronco attacks, revealing Shieldred. Well, that can certainly punish us drawing cards, although most of our cantrips don't necessarily draw, they exile or reveal the top cards. So it could still be beatable. Alright, Highway Robbery, also a good reason to hang on to a land. Although I can also sacrifice a land, which is good enough. And then keep land in hand for the aforementioned removal. Analyze can get Questing Druids. Adventure. And then we just need a few more spells here. Volcanic Spites. Play land first. Or do we... I guess it's fine, I can just tap a creature at this point. And the extra spell is probably more relevant. So we can take out Shieldreds.
And torch the tower. So shield her down. And uh, yeah, we should have enough creatures to attack for lethal. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have Enduring Vitality. Maybe Analyze to get Storm Splitter. And a bit of interaction. So yeah, it's a keepable hand. Do have to decide right away if we want to get a land with Analyze. I think I try and keep it as a tutor effect. Opponent's a red-green with Hardfire Hero, so it's more of an aggro deck. Alright, we found Storm Splitter, so now Analyze is fine to get a land. And just need to try and survive until we can assemble the combo. The more cantrips we can keep, the better. So there's nothing I really want to ditch with Volcanic Spites. And then now I could also adventure the Questing Druid. But I won't necessarily be able to then keep up Volcanic Spite. So yeah, opponent might have their own Questing Druid that they're gonna adventure. Close call. I think it is reasonable to adventure here just to try and hit our land drops with it. Ideally find land torture tower. That's gonna be a land cash grab. So how afraid are we of this Heartfire Hero with open mana? It's not that likely for us to die next turn if we don't keep up Volcanic Spite, but it's not impossible. But the fact that they're playing green also means that they might have protection spells, so Volcanic Spite is not going to work anyway. So I think I cash grab first and then play Commercial District. And then... Just looking for cantrips, another Volcanic Spite. Cannot be bad for me either, so I guess we'll keep it. And the opponent did indeed have a Questing Druid. We do see Snakeskin Veil for protection, Challenger. So hopefully they're just going to slowly build up, which gives us the chance to do the same. This might be a double Volcanic Spite turn, however. As opposed to playing Enduring Vitality, just to make sure... The opponent's board is under control. And then is there anything I want to get rid of? Not really. I'm happy with my hands. This is also where Scorching Dragonfire over Volcanic Spite could have exiled the Hardfire Hero, so we could have saved ourselves 3 damage and potentially gotten an extra turn. So yeah, specifically against the red decks, definitely prefer Dragonfire over Volcanic Spite, but I've had a, a lot of games against other decks where the extra card draw has come in handy. Drawing an Unsight Plan would be nice, because then I can play Vitality, keep up another Spite. And then Vitality could chum block if needed. Although it would give us one less mana to work with. Alright, so found a tapped land. Don't think playing Storm Splitter is the play. So we could die here. Another Analyze seems fine. So, yeah, even if we chump with Vitality, we should be able to combo kill next turn. But I have to imagine our opponent's got a way to present lethal. So yeah, maybe one more untapped land could have made the difference. Should have maybe been digging more aggressively with the previous Volcanic Spites. Shock goes face, and that's already gonna be good enough here. Alright, GG's. Close one. Just needed that one extra untapped step to get there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a little bit of removal. Analyze can maybe save it to get our Enduring Vitality and then cast Robbery in the meantime. Seems okay. Being able to plot a Robbery is pretty versatile too. Opponent with turn one Swamp. So have to expect cut down in our future as well. I think I still uh, plot a robbery, even if they have a deep cavern bat, I can either torch a tower, or if they take it, that's fine. Alright, opponent's gonna make us discard, or rather exile a card from my hand. Yeah, torch a tower can go. 
All right, so question now is, do I need to analyze to get a land or do I try and save it to get the Enduring Vitality, which against black at least would stick around on the battlefield even if they remove it. Plotting an altar robbery is reasonable too. Going for Questing Druid end of turn might actually be the better play since that way hitting a land or Enduring Vitality is both fine. I might still want to analyze just to hit a land, but it might be our only way to access our Enduring Vitality. So I think I'll pass. Let's go to Preacher, so... And we get to Seek the Beast. Finding another Analyze and a land. So this one is probably fine to get another land. And then I can plot another Robbery. Play Copper Line Gorge. So we got maximum value out of our questing druid. And now we don't mind discarding a land to the robbery. Now if our opponent taps out for shieldred, they can punish the card draw from her robbery. So then we won't have much time to combo off. A Liliana is potentially still beatable. But yeah, the problem here is we really need to find Vitality before we play Storm Splitters, and Storm Splitter is just gonna die as soon as we play it. So, do we try Questing Druids? Can pick up some counters with the Robbery. Probably dies to Cut Down, but Cut Down also takes out Storm Splitter, so that's fine. If they minus Liliana, they're not plussing for a turn. So, I think it's fine to go Questing Druids. Then Robbery discard lands. And then by getting more cards in Graveyard, we can also maybe collect evidence. So yeah, it does seem like they have a cut down. Found both Vitality and another Storm Splitter, so that's nice. Okay, so cast a Vitality. See, so cut down a response. Liliana can mine us on the Vitality, but we'll still have the enchantment, which is what matters. And then we just need to get lucky stringing together enough cantrips when we go for the combo. Go for the throat's fine. So yeah, if they actually had an anoint with affliction instead, they might have been able to exile the enduring vitality. Now let go of Storm Splitter, which also enables analyze with collect evidence, so we can get a questing druid for more card advantage. Alright, so we've got some options. But this is the combo turn. Now our opponent's pretty likely to remove Storm Splitter as soon as I put another spell on the stack. So I'm only going to have the one copy to work with. But here goes nothing. Robbery can sack a land at this point. Alright, it looks like that resolved. So now we want to analyze, get a questing druid. And we're comboing off. So now we probably want to surveil before we continue. Or I can just use questing druid and then surveil before we draw. Find another cease and a might of the meek. Alright, so we should be in the clear here. And yeah, our opponent knows what's happening and scoops it up. That's going to be well over 20 damage. Okay, we're on the play. We have a little bit of removal, a couple card draw spells. This one's borderline. Missing both of our combo pieces is pretty rough, even though cash grab gets to dig pretty deep. I think I got a mulligan hands like these. Uh, at least we have two removal spells now. Don't really want to go to five. And cease and desist. Doesn't do a whole lot for me. Good to have in the graveyard for collect evidence purposes as well. Opponent also red green. Could this be a mirror match? End of turn cash grab. And 
that's a swing and a miss. Probably go for a commercial district to surveil. So we've seen a good chunk of our deck and still haven't found any of our eight creatures. Opponent also with cash grab. Milling Altanak. Do they have the Enduring Vitality? They do. And yeah, this is where Scorching Dragonfire might have been the better card over Volcanic Spite. Can still cast it, but it doesn't really interfere with the opponent's plan in any way. So you might be better off holding it for a potential Storm Splitter. While their opponent can still combo off by tapping the Storm Splitter right away. So I'll take three. And say its name is fine. And again. See, commune with nature. Alright, so cash grab end of turn. Found our enduring vitality. Now our opponent could of course also have a torture tower with Bargain sacrificing their enchantments to exile our Enduring Vitality. Potentially a reason to Volcanic Spite here, so that they have to sacrifice the actual enchantment at least. Sure. And then we can dig for Storm Splitter. Our hand currently is pretty light on cantrips, so we'll need some of those as well to combo off. So yeah, we're close to comboing off, although our opponent could be in the same spot. So analyze, get Storm Splitter, could then play Storm Splitter and be tapped out since it's not like Volcanic Spite saves me in any way. This is a bit more mana efficient. And uh, it's not that likely for the opponent to be able to deal 4 damage. But let's see if our opponent combos off instead. I guess with Say Its Name you can also search your graveyard. Yeah, so if they find a third copy they're still good to go. Alright, so can play Enduring Vitality. Opponent can try and stop the combo by sacking their Enduring Vitality to a torch to tower. So it would have been better to be able to bargain this and exile theirs in response. Target our four toughness storm splitter. Find a cash grab. So we can keep going. Hope to find a questing druid. And alright, our opponent concedes. Probably a little bit premature here since we were nowhere near lethal, but uh, yeah, with a little bit of luck we could have found enough spells to get there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We've got a one lander with no real prospect of immediately finding a second land. So I don't think I can keep. We're also missing both combo pieces. All right, this is a bit better. So definitely want a vitality, two lands, and then one of the removal spells. Analyze can be a way to get our storm splitter if we can fill the graveyard enough. Questing Druid's kind of a two for one. So maybe keep the one mana answer. So turn two we can maybe adventure questing druid. And I guess the red deck exiling with torture tower is also quite relevant. Don't want to just cast it for the one for one. Need to try and punish a pump spell. Which means we have to take some damage initially. And then I still need an extra land to give me double green for vitality. So I'll take two. Monstrous Rage on Swiss Spear. Casting Torture Tower response is unlikely to work out for me since I likely have another way to enable prowess. And now Felonious Rage on Slick Shots. That resolves. No real reason to Torture Tower response. See if they have another pump spell. And then now try and exile the slick shot. That works. 
Still take six damage, but could have been a lot more. And they might have a cell sword left in hand as well. So yeah, awkwardly cannot play Enduring Vitality. Could analyze to get a forest and then play it. And then keep up two mana or plot a robbery, maybe. I guess one Vitality could go, so we could also just cast it. But there's no real advantage to doing so if we're tapped out. And I do need to analyze for a forest if I want to get it in play right now. Or we could robbery and still maybe draw into another torture tower and keep that available. But then I wouldn't be guaranteed to play Vitality next turn, I guess. Never mind, I can analyze for forest, turning both verges into green mana. And then we're still good to go. So I guess that's the safest play here. Cast it, discarding Vitality. Did not find our uh, Torsha Tower, but can now analyze to get a fourth lane. So we will be shields down. And since we drew Storm Splitter, we do need to uh, look for one. Cacophony Scamp is acceptable. Take two. And then we can play Vitality, which if it trades is fine. And blocking Scamp is the safest play here, I think. Probably see a pump spell on it. Or if our opponent has the uh, Cell Sword, we just die regardless of what we block. And that seems to be the case. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We've got what looks like a reasonable hand, although we are missing both of our combo pieces, which is the main concern. Do have some removal, couple surveillance to set up initially. I'll give it a shot. So against aggro, we've got some decent tools. And in the slower matchups, we'll have more time to get the combo. Turn one islands. I guess counter spells can also be annoying to deal with. Although we do have some plays we can make at instant speed. So we'll cash grab. Finding Storm Splitter. And a highway robbery, I don't mind keeping. Plotting is also good in the face of counter spells. So I don't necessarily want to cash grab, but I could adventure the questing druid. Although then I guess we won't be plotting the robbery. Alright, so maybe start by casting robbery. And then try and hit my land drop for cease and assist. One towards the tower can go. Eh, won't be able to cast Cease and Assist, but we can Surveil. And another Cash Grab. I mean, it's not a bad card. Enduring Vitality is what we really need, as well as just keep hitting our land drops. So it does kind of help with that. Our opponent hasn't cast any spells yet, but can expect them to have some bounce spells and counter spells, plus maybe some card draw. They're going to tap out for a hot gin at some point with the mana discount to keep up their author interaction. Same with Eluge. So yeah, it's going to be tricky to combo off since just bouncing the Enduring Vitality can also set us back by a whole turn. Right, opponent is still being passive, although now they could cast their 5 mana card draw spell. Do want to hit my land drop, so cash grab to try and do so. Did not get there, but did find another Storm Splitter or Questing Druid. I guess we'll grab the Questing Druid. Could adventure it now, but then at least one card's gonna go to waste. Or we can cash grab again, hope to find a land, and then I can still play it. Although now if we find our Enduring Vitality will be pretty sad. Eh, land it is. And yeah, 
Flow of Knowledge, opponent gets to draw 5. But in order to beat their conditional counter spells, we also need access to a lot of mana. But now they can probably slam down a win condition and back it up with enough counter spells and author interaction where they can close out the game in a few attacks. Nope, still digging with the prankster. Finding a sleight of hand. So yeah, both decks kinda struggling to present a threat. As our opponent discards another land to hand size. So this turn can maybe get this questing druid in play, and then end of turn adventure another one. Don't really need Storm Splitter in play right now. And if our opponent is just keeping a hard counter for Storm Splitter specifically, we already milled a few authors. So if there's only one left in the deck they need to worry about. So we might need to come up with an alternative win condition. Moment of Truth milling over a Phantom Interference. Can at least pay for that conditional counter spell if we seek the beast end of turn. Okay, and then can cease end of turn, exiling some of their instants and sorceries. They might find over this one. Yep, phantom interference. And then at least if they bounce questing druids, we can still reuse the adventure. So that's not a bad thing. If Farah's Dispersal comes to mind. Which they would be able to cast for just one mana. Yep. That's fine. Might of the Meek will go to waste if I don't cast it here, but I don't think we care too much. The plan now would be, again, end of turn questing Druid, seek the beasts, hope to find Enduring Vitality and get it in play. And this way we can pay for another Phantom Interference. And then even have to discard to hand size. Yeah, another Might of the Meek can go. It's going to be kind of awkward if they have more bound spells. At least with a pair of removal, we can answer one of their threats. Tolarian Terror is not the biggest one. More scared of a Hadi Jin or Eluge. Eh, opponent's going to hard counter here. Feels like a win. So now we can resolve our Storm Splitter, perhaps. If I Questing Druid again, then um, that could also work out, since if they counter, then they're completely tapped out. Possible they have a two mana counter specifically for creatures. Still no Enduring Vitality, so that's taking us a while. Still happy to resolve Storm Splitter, I think. While we get the chance. Right, opponent did indeed have a counter for creatures, a long river's pull. That happens. So questing druid attacks. If they block, we can double might of the meek. If not, second main play another questing druid. So it's Questing Druid Beattown, not our usual game plan, but with only one Storm Splitter left in the deck, it's probably the only one we have. Take our turn. Also need to watch out for our opponent copying their uh, creature with another... Uh, where is it? Three steps ahead. It's also going to be very powerful making a 5-5 five, five at instant speed. So we don't want to put another spell on the stack if we can avoid it. Opponent's going to try and let damage happen. Do we have a response? This is not necessarily a race we're winning. Could adventure another questing druids. Then our opponent counters, makes a copy. If I try and draw with Might of the Meek, they might have another bound spell. 
So there are a few concerns, but uh, if I had just let things happen, our opponent will eventually find another big card draw effect and pull ahead. So it's kind of on me to try and close out the game in a timely fashion. So let's try another Seek the Beast. Alright, and then I'll let damage happen. And then Analyze wants to get another Storm Splitter. May as well cease before damage. And found a Vitality, so hit you for 9. Opponent's gonna flow in response. Okay, so drawing eight cards, discarding two. They're bound to find more interaction and win conditions more importantly. So bounce questing root for one mana. Can cast a vitality, get it countered by another phantom interference. Maybe analyze first to try and get a Storm Splitter. Although, again, it's unlikely to resolve. But sure, we can cast Vitality. Although that does give them the opportunity to interfere in successfully when we can sort of play around it. Although it's still going to be tricky. Maybe give them a Questing Druid. Which we can still at least grow. Alright, and then pass a turn. Opponent's got a cramp to tap two creatures down. So they're hitting us for 10. And then, yeah, if they have a counter spell plus maybe a way to play another cramp, we're just dead. Curiosity for card draw. That one we can potentially exile with Torture Tower if we enable bargain. But yeah, that uh, second flow of knowledge was the big turning point in this game. Talarian Terror for one mana. And yeah, I suspect our opponent's got at least two counter spells up. So we won't be able to resolve much of anything. But this is step one, I guess. A long river's pull counters. Now I could cast a Storm Splitter and hope they don't have another one of those, but they probably do. Alright, Storm Splitter resolves. Now we're not going to be able to go for lethal here, but at least now if they play another Crab, Storm Splitter allows us to make blockers in the opponent's turn to maybe survive. So that's the plan. All right, they're just going to bounce for one mana. So what's my response? So yeah, if our opponent's got a crab, they can play to tap my creatures down. We are certainly dead. This uh, is not in the end step, otherwise the tokens might have persisted. So yeah, don't have a lot of options. Can spite the curiosity just to prevent some damage. No attacks, since we're nowhere close to threatening lethal. Does playing a questing druid do anything for me? An extra blocker doesn't really help in the grand scheme of things. So I guess we would probably just take out the uh, Enduring Curiosity. And then if they don't have a way to tap down my creatures or bounce them, we would still maybe survive. Alright, so I'm guessing we're still dead, but let's see. Any bound spell or crab will do it. They can copy the crab with a spree counter spell and that'll do it too. Yep. Alright, well, felt like a pretty tough matchup. We tried our best with the alternate game plan of questing druid, but it didn't quite come together. Had some 
clunky turns where we couldn't hit our lane drops either. And then the Enduring Vitality never really showed up in time. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. We have what looks like a keepable hand. Can keep up Torture Tower turn 1. Turn 2, likely to plot a Highway Robbery. Opponent green-white, so maybe an up the beanstalk kind of a domain deck, which can certainly go over the top, but may not be all that prepared to handle the combo if we can assemble it. Although that being said, they do probably have a leyline binding to exile the enduring vitality, speak of the devil, so we won't necessarily be able to keep it on the battlefield, which is a pretty big drawback. So I'll robbery just to try and hit my land drop. Torture Tower is not going to be all that necessary. And we found a back of Vitality, so that can come in handy. Alright, so they won't be able to Binding end of turn, but next turn they can, since it already gets a 3 mana discount. It's gonna be a Cornucopia instead. So if we actually had uh, maybe an untapped land, we could have comboed off. Yeah, I don't want to play Storm Splitter and let the opponent deal with it next turn. Playing another Vitality is also bad if they have a Sunfall. So best I can do is try and set up and hope that they uh, cannot answer the vitality that's currently in play and then hit for three can plot robbery end of turn questing druids although casting the robbery might be better since that way I can still hit my land drop for the turn and then volcanic spite can go all right that's good Pass a turn. Hope they tap out for some threats. And then uh, next turn we might be able to get there. Herd migration, get a land. Gets a swamp. So four out of five times for domain, and our opponent's likely keeping up a ley line binding at the very least. Found another robbery. And another storm splitter. So if I go for Storm Splitter, our opponent most likely just answers the Enduring Vitality this turn, and then Storm Splitter next turn, but we've got backups for both. So cast Storm Splitter. If they answer Vitality now, I guess Storm Splitter cannot tap for mana. And yeah, they're gonna binding the Vitality now. So I actually won't be able to robbery now either. Although, let's see, can I sacrifice my creature to bargain? I guess I would need another target. Although, I think, let me see, I think this still works. Because we sacrifice it to bargain, and then there's no longer a target, so we still have the enchantments in play. Which still doesn't let me keep comboing here, but at least means we have the enchantment on the battlefield. Because if I might of the meek, I would have to draw into an untapped land to cast a robbery to keep going. Feels like we're potentially wasting a lot of resources, but I guess the robbery does go away here. So maybe it's still my best chance. Did not find the untapped land. Although questing druid's not the worst, so gives me a chance to get there next turn. Keep another robbery, hit for one. And then we don't need to play another Vitality, but if they deal with this one, we have a backup. And we have a backup Storm Splitter. So yeah, considering the Leyline Binding, this is probably the best case scenario. Another Cornucopia. And a Herd Migration. So now we gotta hope they don't have another Leyline Binding here. They might tap out for an Up the Beanstalk, and I hope we can get there. All right, they have a get lost for my enchantment instead. But uh, yeah, we can just play another Vitality. And now a robbery can just sacrifice a land. Since hopefully we can win right now. Might of the Meek isn't bad. So let's uh, think about this, Might of the Meek. Make some more copies, 
that maybe questing druids can find a land. Alright, Cease and Assist is another good draw. So my land in hand's not gonna go to waste one way or the other. And yep, can now play a land from exile. Volcanic Spice, another redraw. And a cash grab, so we should have plenty here. So target my own creature and get some more triggers. And can Volcanic Spite again. Ideally find another questing druid with a cash grab. As we're waiting for the server, too many storm splitters for it to handle. But uh, yeah, we can already see with 31 storm splitter triggers, this is going to be more than enough. So even if the server times out here somehow, we still have the moral victory. Oh, what is this? A fade to black? That's very dramatic. Maybe the server couldn't handle us winning so hard. And we're back in the home screen. Well, that's the first time this has happened. Yeah, I guess I'm not sure if we actually won or lost. Well, I guess it's a good time to wrap up. So a red-green Storm Splitter combo, pretty powerful deck capable of winning on turn 4 with some amount of consistency. Now it's probably still going to be an underdog versus all the red aggro decks in the format, even with 8 instant speed removal spells. Probably need Scorching Dragonfire to kind of upgrade your uh, Volcanic Spite in that particular matchup. But as we've seen, the card draw from Volcanic Spite can be very useful if we're in the middle of comboing off and just need that one extra spell to trigger Storm Splitter to win the game. But uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome that Storm Splitter went from a meme card to potentially a competitive option over the course of one extra expansion. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.